right, we're back with another episode of Tales from the Grid Square. Square, 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 square. This is my brother Stuart. Hello, everyone. Joining us today. Thanks for tuning into YouTube again. once again. For those of you that don't know, it's by my friend Nick Orton. This is a compilation of spooky stories of things that happened in military bases and deployed environments across the globe. We'll get into the first story. It says 0333. This was about five, almost six years ago. I must also note that I was living in IHG Army Hotel housing because I was attending a five month long school for the army. The way the rooms were set up, I had a roommate and we share a room. I had my own bedroom, but I shared a kitchen and bathroom with my roommate and he has his own bedroom. The walls of our respective bedrooms back up to each other and the walls were super thin. I could hear everything he did and he could hear everything I did in my room. Probably not a good room to bring any friends back to. No, don't bring people back to that. That's a little cramped if you ask me. I also need to mention that he was a light sleeper, meaning his roommate was a light sleeper. If he even rolled in bed and a spring squeaked, it would wake him up. He would sigh loudly as to let me know that I woke him up, at which point I say, sorry, out loud and we both go back to sleep. Yeah, that's the one thing that sucks about having a roommate, because like you don't really have a choice who your roommate is, and if you've got a roommate that snores really loud or something, like I had to sleep with earplugs in my ears, because one of my roommates before had a really bad case of sleep apnea, and he would snore so loud that like the whole room would shake. This started out as any regular Thursday. My alarm went off at 4 a.m. and I was up and moving. I went about my usual daily activities and I finally got home that Thursday night at around 6.30 p.m. Because every day of the week was like this. By the time I got home, I was extremely tired. Yeah, no kidding, because you're up at 4 a.m. I finished any work that might need to be done. I took a shower, then I got in bed. I got in bed at about 10 p.m. I fell asleep shortly after and drifted off to dreamland. Usually I never have dreams. I just fall asleep and wake up without any recollection of where my mind goes while I'm asleep. This night was different. Dun, dun, dun. Spooky. My dream starts off with me laying in bed and my eyes are closed. I can hear the quiet buzz of the light in the hallway just outside my room and the sound of the heating system winding and blowing air softly. All of a sudden, I hear the giggle of a little girl and open my eyes. I am not alarmed. That's strange. I would be very alarmed. Be panicked. I am just curious. I see every detail of my room in my dream. My phone is plugged into the right of me on the bedside table. I see the blinding big blue numbers of my alarm clock sitting across the room below my TV. The time reads 333 a.m. I see my desk, my laptop lying on it, and next to it, a bottle full of dip spit. Ew. We once found a two liter of a Marine's dip spit the day after he transitioned. One time I had to sort recycling and I found a protein jug full of dip spit. <laughs> all right. This is so real to me. I am lost in all the detail of this dream. Then I realize it. I cannot move. My body is frozen with paralysis. I hear the giggle of the girl again. Now I'm beginning to worry. There are no families with children in this building. Only six single soldiers. Even if this is a dream, I know that for a fact. As I am looking down at my feet trying to get even the slightest wiggle from my toes, something, anything that would make me move and break the spell, I notice something. Something is wrong. There is someone standing in my room. Something, I should say. It isn't standing on the ground. It's just hovering. I make out the silhouette of a person. This dark black outline of a man is standing in front of me. Had I not been frozen with paralysis, I would have jumped at this realization. I'm struck with confusion for not knowing who who this uninvited guest is standing before me, but I fear no one or so I thought. I look further up to make eye contact with this person, this thing that was standing in my bedroom at 0300 in the morning. I want to look this thing in the eyes and let it know that as soon as I can move, it will be leaving my bedroom. As my eyes move higher and higher, the first thing I noticed was the smile. This f smile. It was the creepiest smile I have ever seen in my life. The only way I could describe it is when someone smiles too hard, an almost extreme exaggeration. It's head was tilted sideways, but something else was off. I could see no cheekbones. The nose and eyes were also missing. All I could see was that f***ing creepy ass smile, just smiling at me. A smile that let me know that it knew I was unable to move. This is where fear set in. Yeah, I would imagine that would be pretty scary. I try to sit up. I'm fighting with all my might to jolt myself out of this paralysis. I just need to wake up from this dream. It's just a dream, but I cannot move. At this point, all I can think of to do is scream. Maybe this will wake me. Nothing. Nothing comes out of my mouth. Panicking, I try again. I manage to whisper to myself, Get up! Then, an explosion of what sounds like an explosion goes off in my head. Boom! I wake up from my dream, confused as hell, looking around my room. Everything is in order. My phone is plugged into the right of me on the bedside table. I see the blinding big blue 
blue numbers of my alarm clock sitting across the room below my TV. The time reads 3.33 a.m. I see my desk, my laptop lying on it, and next to it, a bottle full of dip spit. Wait, the time reads 3.33 a.m. I am awake. How does the time now and the time in my dream line up so exactly? As I stare at the clock, I notice a slight movement to the left of the clock. That f***ing smile. A cold chill races down my spine. I feel my body lock into place. I am once again paralyzed. This thing advances towards me. I am completely terrified at this point. I still cannot move. I know my pocket knife is in the drawer next to my bed. If I can grab it, then everything will be just fine. I tell my mind to move my arm. Nothing. Why can't I f move? It is getting closer and closer. It moves incredibly slow, almost like it knows that it can take its precious time. I am not going anywhere. I am at the mercy of this creature. Once again, all I can think to do is yell. Nothing. Again, nothing comes out of my mouth. Not only is this dude having an inception, sleep paralysis on top of it. Yeah, this is definitely sleep paralysis for That's sure. That's a nice sleep time protein shake of like the worst shit ever. My only chance was to wake up my roommate and hopefully he senses the panic in my voice. I cannot even squeak out a whisper. I know I am doomed now. I take a deep breath and I close my eyes, accepting the fact that I have no control over this situation. I am laying there, frozen, still with my eyes tightly closed. I hear the giggle of a little girl, the same giggle that I heard in my dream. Without even wanting to, almost as a reflex that I cannot control, I open my eyes. This thing is literally a foot away from me. It is now hovering vertically over me and my bed. That f***ing smile. I am in complete and utter desperation now. My eyes are shut as tightly as they can be. I just want this to end. Whatever it was planning to do, I just wanted it to happen. By some miracle, I am released from the state of paralysis. My body shoots up with my fist heading for where this thing is smiling at me. As I am swinging upwards, my eyes open and I see nothing. Nothing at all. My room is empty of any life besides my own. Then I hear it again. The giggle of this little girl is outside of my room. The door to my bedroom is shaking. How the f*** is my roommate still asleep? <laughs> As the giggling stops, I hear the whimpering of a crying baby. The sound is getting further and further away, though. It sounds as though it has left our room and is traveling away down the hall. Everything is dead silent except for the quiet buzz of the light in the hallway just outside my room and the sound of the heating system winding and blowing air softly. Still have no idea what happened. Didn't go back to sleep that night. Roommate thought it was hilarious when I told him. I think I've only ever had one night terror that I can remember. That bed at mom's house, you had that like back to back both nights when we were up there. I never wanted to sleep in that bed again because and she still has it i don't sleep in there either because i remember having that like feeling like there's something in the room but you can't move or make any noise all right next story it's called ntc creature okay so i didn't start believing in any of this until i went to ntc in 2016 and had an experience with a wendigo skinwalker coincidentally enough in 2016 at ntc never saw it though only heard smelled and felt it for a long time it was just something i would think about or thought i dreamed until i talked to this full-blooded navajo dude when I got out, and he said it was a skinwalker or wendigo. To preface the experience, I spent most of my childhood in nature, hunting, f***ing off, stalking animals, and became significantly in tune with nature. I could feel the changes in the earth as beings moved through it, and definitely if they were looking at me. Fast forward to Fort King Irwin in 2016. I find myself as a lonely observer on a mountaintop observing a pass after three-fourths of our battalion was quote-unquote killed and our fearless leaders fazcammed of what was left of the unit into a valley. I was on my OP by myself with two strikers worth of soldiers at the mountain base. I would walk down for resupply, but I was by my lonesome with an LLDR for three days and nights. The last night I was up there just doing my thing, probably 0300 in the morning, and I started feeling there was something near me. At first, I I assumed it was a giant jackrabbit moving somewhere around me and I brushed it off. About 15 minutes later and the feeling is back. It feels like something bigger is nearby. Assuming it's a mountain goat or one of the donkeys people keep talking about. And shortly after that, I can hear something moving around, probably 200 miles away, dead of night. It begins to move closer and the feeling of indifference and curiosity turns into fear. I begin to notice the sounds moving closer. I knew it was not a hoofed animal, simply by it from its steps. And the cadence that it was moving made me think it was a biped for sure and I started wondering, what the f*** could it be? I pop on my PSQ-20 and pick up nothing on MVG or thermal on the mountain, just the vehicles, sleep area, and two soldiers on guard a bit away. I decided to stop observing and face how I could hear this thing, all while I began to feel what I can only describe as dread. Dread so pure I can feel it in my 
teeth. I had nothing but blanks, so I grabbed my hunting knife and kept it on me. I heard the creature move towards me in a zigzag pattern, ever so slowly, pausing to listen or smell, and then advancing towards me. Around the time, I felt that scary feeling when I noticed a stench of rotting flesh getting worse until my eyes almost burned from it. I was frozen in some odd state for probably five minutes until I felt the presence recede away from me. That was it. I didn't say a f thing to another until I discovered this page and saw other people having accounts like the feeling of fear and the rotting smell, which was all just affirmation to me. I wasn't crazy. But as I said before, I never saw the thing. I didn't go to sleep that night. And once the sun started to come up, I went and tried to find some tracks, which I swear to God, I can track a thing or two. There was nothing on the ground for tracks. The only tracks I could find were on vegetation, but it's more challenging to catch a line on an animal that way. And it was too sporadic to track or assume it was all from the same animal. Animal. It f***ed with me, man. The noises of it moving would almost change as it progressed. Like I said, never anything hooved. That's very distinct, but it was like a big cat taking its time stalking something, but almost like its feet were changing from paws to claws to bare feet or something. But I knew it could see me and was moving towards me. I could feel both of its eyes on me like someone was pushing two fingers against the base of my neck. It was like I was hanging out in some barren wasteland, like a tiger or some other apex predator teleported next to me out of the f***ing blue. Crazy. I can say with all almost certainty it was not a cougar. The way it moved couldn't have been feline, especially with how far away I heard it. If it were a cougar after me, I wouldn't be here. Also, large cats are incredibly elusive. They would have been way out of their area upon our arrival of strikers running and that many people around. They have a massive range and would have happily off. Also, if it were just an animal, my body wouldn't have responded like that. I can't even describe the gripping fear. I never felt anything like it before that and not since. There was no fight or flight. It was like I went into the brainstem and froze. I feel like a for acting the way I did. Being the outdoorsman, I think I am. It was just different. I could feel dread on my teeth. That's how I can describe it. Like bone chilling dread. I uh, live near Cherokee. They don't mess around. I've mentioned it to a few of my friends out there and they're just like, we don't really talk about that. Which is eluding because I'm like, but I want to know. I've never experienced it. And I've lived in, in, in the middle of the woods for a while now, but they seem to be, at least most of the buddies I know out there seem to be very convinced that those things actually exist. So I just don't ask questions and don't go out at night. The last story we're going to do for this episode is called Dog Man in the Back 40. I'm stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The training area we have is called the Back 40. Thousands of acres of ranges and training sites. My story takes place in the Back 40 near a makeshift town called Cassidy. It's located in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by forest and thick underbrush, and at that time it was mid-July, so everything was in full bloom. My company was conducting a two-week field exercise in this area, and after we had secured this town, my platoon was tasked with pulling a blocking position about 100 meters into the wood line from this town. So this is like day 12 of the two week field problem. I'm located on the far right area of our blocking position okay. with my squad. Keeps calling it a problem. Like yeah. it's not a solution. I'm a squad leader of my infantry platoon. And we dig into our position. I'm located 10 to 15 meters from my soldiers with my back up against the tree. Darkness sets on the back 40. The guys are tired and my team leaders are doing their checks to ensure the guys are awake. Hours go by and I didn't keep track of time, but if I had to guess it was around midnight, no moon. Only thing you could see was to our rear where the town of Cassidy was located. My alpha team leader is laying with his team on the line and we're pulling a 50-50 security detail so one man up the other asleep. My Bravo team leader is sleeping next to me. Our platoon radio operator was walking back and forth behind us bouncing between my squad and the others all on line in this blocking position. So every 20 to 30 minutes I hear him walking by and eventually he comes to me and says, hey sergeant you good on radio batteries? I'm good dude I reply. So being used to hearing him walking by so much I hear something and I'm not even thinking about it. I ignore it. Then it gets closer and closer and a lot slower in movement. I look over my shoulder and say, what the f*** are you doing? And that's when I saw whatever it was in a mid crouch pose for about 20 meters from me, making a low, subtle growling noises like a dog or wolf. I froze and felt the hair on the back of my neck stand and my heart start to race. Whatever this was stood at least five feet tall, crouched over sinking lower and lower to the ground. Paralyzed with confusion and fear, I watched for another 10 to 12 seconds. I then reach and grab my e-tool, not taking my eyes off of whatever I was looking at, then quickly flip my PSQ 20s, my night vision. And as I did this, the creature ran in a diagonal line from me fast. And when I say fast, booking it in a low stance, I flipped my 20s to thermal and I saw the outline of this thing running. Everyone around me heard it crashing through the woods. It ran too fast to be a man and too big to be a deer as it was fully standing up as it crashed through the brush. Later that night, another squad leader told me he heard loud, deep sniffling noises near his position. His soldiers were saying they smelled 
what appeared to resemble a wet dog smell. In the hours before dawn, we all heard this loud guttural noise that would start up immediately after the coyotes. Coyotes are prominent in the area and you always hear them, except after this howl or loud noise, they all instantly stopped. I had always heard stories and never believed it, as well as others in my platoon. After this encounter, we all agreed we were not alone that night and something lurks out there. It was canine by the look of it. It was dark. I don't want to speculate and give a false tale, but in the face, it was elongated like a snout from what I could see. I grew up playing in the woods, camping and hunting. I'd never even heard or felt that way ever. The good thing is, is at least he's like, he was with a big group of people. Imagine if he had been out there by himself or with just like two other people or one other person, like that would have been a whole lot scarier. Yeah, because knee jerk reaction is like, well, if I'm out here with a bunch of other people, maybe I won't be the one who gets yeah. got. Things that crawl and skitter and run low to the ground like that too is just way freakier because then it takes the human aspect out of it. And you're like, I'm being chased by a monster because you don't know what it is. People probably hear a lot of weird noises when they're on post and maybe people are tired. He said he was on day 12 of a 14 day field op. You can have auditory hallucinations, you know, because I mean, after a while, like of sleep deprivation is possible to start hearing weird stuff that's not necessarily there. But definitely done that. Again, it's tough to say. I mean, like, because he's got validation from multiple other people. A lot of people said they heard the same thing. If it's multiple people saying they heard the same thing, that's like validation. If you guys have had any spooky stories like that, let us know in the comments because that seems to be something that's a common trend that people see and hear creepy stuff when they're out in the field, especially in the tree line like that. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sweet and we'll dreams. keep doing these nighty night.